books for Deerfield EMS, yes. right? It will zero the books out. Okay. And Brenda is, from what I understand, she's recommending this? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. <laughs> oh. You make the motion? If you want to make a motion. Oh, do I want to make the motion? I'll make the motion to write off um, $99,383.73 um, from Deerfield EMS for um, runs that were made from April 30th, 2006 through um, June 28th, uh, 2014. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, this might not be a totally appropriate, but I, I, from the last SCEMS meeting, it seems that this is starting to happen over again. And do you, what is, can you briefly explain to me what Comstar's policy is as far as getting this money? Yeah. And in more particular, what efforts do they make and for how long? So, I mean, happens again. This will always happen. We will always have bills that are sent out and that we don't collect on. There's always going to be a portion of that that's just the nature of being an emergency for service. Um, Comstar, what they do is they are our billing agency. So they handle, they automatically retrieve our electronic uh, patient data at least every two weeks. They contact the insurance company, they send bills, and they receive payment, and they give us reports for all of that. After, that, that goes on for 120 days, and at 120 days, they say, okay, we've attempted to collect this money, now what do you want us to do? Um, and this is where the SCEMS Board of Oversight uh, has recently, within the last six months or so, approved a policy for what to do with those accounts. And we have a nice flow chart, we have a nice policy, and it's really trying to be fair, equitable, and humane, considering that these people, in most cases, just cannot afford to pay. So people who have a hardship, they can't pay, they don't have that money. We appreciate that. They have abatement requests. We can actually cancel off all of the uh, bills altogether if they uh, if they're over, double the poverty line or under. Uh, if they're over that threshold, but they can articulate an uh, inability to pay or a hardship, then we have other methods um, for going on that. Um, the purpose of that is to really try to sing single out the people who can pay but decide not to. And those are the people who will eventually um, be recommended for referral to a collections agency. Um, and there's, we're still working out the kinks on that. There needs to be agreement that's signed with the collections agency to set that stuff up. Um, but, but that is the process. As far as our collections go, we do extraordinarily well. And part of that is that most of our patients have insurance. The other part of it is we do an excellent job collecting their demographic information. Comstar does an excellent job getting it in a timely manner and following up. And anytime they have a question about the demographics or things like that, they send us a message, both David and myself, and we reply back as far as clarifications on addresses or things like that. The most recent reports, um, I had them update me just actually yesterday. Um, for insured patients, we are collecting in the mid 90%. Um, which is outstanding. I mean, that's that's really a testament to the good data that we're collecting, the good job, the good job Comstar is doing. That difference there, that last five, six percent, those are like the co-pays that people don't pay, or they max out their insurance and and they don't realize it. Um, so those are probably the people that um, are more likely to go to collections on the end. As far as our patients who are just uninsured at all, um, we're doing a much better job. Um, actually getting that money back. So for fiscal year 16, um, it was 75, or sorry. I think it was 7%. Yeah. No, no. It, for fiscal year 16, it was 0.45%. Mm. And then FY17, it was 11.84%. And then just last fiscal year, FY18, it's up to 16%. And that's for people who don't have insurance. So these, this is capturing those people that um, we had bad information on or didn't have uh, private insurance or things like that. So that's really a testament to the good job that we're doing as a system, improving our methodology, getting good information and going forward. So um, our overall collection rate 
when you consider everybody, all the patients that we see is in the mid 80%. And really, like, you want to strive for 80%. That, that's like, if, if communities can crawl their way up to 80%, they consider that a win. We're in the mid 80s right now. So um, there's always going to be that kind of 15% overall that is going to end up in a list, and we're going to have to decide either to write it off or send the collections, but that's, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how, we've been consistently over 90%, though, with the insurance. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Mid 90% okay. um, collecting the money from the insurance companies. Yep. Well, I have a question. I, am I mistaken to recall the, the figure of around $600,000 of uncollected bills? I don't know. I haven't seen those numbers. I don't know where that number came from. I know that uh south county ems just the um write-offs that we think will be written off at this point is do you have that number on you 100 and thank you david so right now for just write-offs it looks like it's going to be 145,000. whatever the remainder of that is i don't know where this 600,000 dollar figure is exactly coming from well i think what it is is, is um, it's anything aged over 60 days, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, and, so a lot right. of that is still That's going right. to be collected. Be collected. Sometimes yeah. insurance companies don't pay for up to three months. Um, a lot of times we send a bill to the insurance, the insurance denies it, and then you appeal it once, and then they pay it. Mm -hmm. So there's a process that takes many months, um, and then some of it is just going to be bad information. We have to go back and, and things like that. So. If there may be that much money, if that number is accurate, and I'm not sure it is, there may be that much money kind of like looming over that we've yeah. billed and haven't received. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a story to tell about really what does that number represent. And I think a lot of it is, is it's not us failing to do our job. It's kind of the process at work. What, could you give me an idea of what an, an average, you think an average ambulance run is? Is $1,000 ballpark? Uh, I believe, well, uh, the... I just had it on my desk. The, if all you need is basic life support, um, I think our, it's like $800 or $900 is yeah. the standard. Um, so around $1,000. Yeah, and then if, it, if you need a paramedic, it actually jumps up. It's closer to $2,000 if you need mm -hmm. a paramedic, yeah. So you said that after 120 days, Comstar comes to you and says, sorry, we can't collect on these, and, and, and the Board of Oversight says, well, you know, if there's needy people, we don't want to do it. And you, you mentioned uh, an abatement request that uh, people who can't afford yep. to pay this way. How many abatement requests have been filled out over the last four years? Over the last four years, only a handful. Um, every single bill that is sent out with Comstar, and I've specifically made sure the language is a little less threatening on these bills, but every single bill that goes to Comstar says, if you have an inability to pay this in full or in part, here is the process to do it. Please contact us. And, and I, I think in the last two years, I've seen three or four abatement requests. And it's typically, th those are abatement requests just for total cancelization, cancel out of the, of the bill. And that's a hardship. Right. Um, and then probably on a bi-monthly basis, we also get somebody saying, oh, I can pay this, but I want to do it in installments. And then we approve that. We say, yeah, absolutely, no problem. Well, I guess my question is, if an average run is a thousand, maybe two thousand dollars, yep. and you've gotten six requests, how does that up to add up to one hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars? I mean, you can see, I, without going into the weeds on what calls are what, I, like I can't. I'm not yeah. going to try to guess what's going on. The I have the reports here. They'll be presented at the next BOO meeting um, since these are so fresh. But you can see exactly how many transports of each, um, how many billed were allowable, and then how much was collected. So um, it's, it, yeah, I, I can't, it, it would be a case-by-case -case basis about how much each, each one costs. Would you have an idea of how many requests are returned from Comstar because of uh, bad information put into the computers? Uh, not off the top of my head. That is part of the aging report that we get. It says, you know, like bad information, things like that. I think probably, I'd say three or four times a month, we get an email from Comstar that says, this address is funny, or it says you did this, but it's not whatever, can you follow it up? And, and then we immediately correct that information, and then it goes off. Mm -hmm. um, so I imagine sometimes 
you don't have a coherent patient to get an address from? Well, right. I mean, there's, there's part of that. We have a relationship with one of the area hospitals who actually forwards the patient demographic oh, nice. information straight to Comstar. They have a relationship well, with we Comstar, did. and so oh, that's great. So they yeah. update Comstar with, with the good information. Um, right. Sometimes it might be just, this patient's unreachable. Like th this, right. we believe this was their address. But they're homeless or they're whatever. Right, or they've what? moved, we can't follow up yeah. or things like that. Um, and then that's where, you know, maybe the collections agency, you know, with more resources or more teeth to kind of go after those things comes into play. Hmm. Um, and, and that's all outlined in our policy about who gets referred to what or yeah. things like that. Well, how, I'm also curious, and, and here again, I'm not sure that this is the proper forum, but since we kind of oversee this thing. Um, is there any effort to, um, I guess, put uh, any process of having a humane conversation with these people saying, look, it, you know, you owe us $1,200. I know you don't work, you've got a broken back, whatever. You know, can you give us $50 this month or whatever to work something out so we can collect yeah. the money? I mean, I, I also feel like, the, you know, the majority of the the Board of Oversight that, you know, we want people to call for help, yeah. uh, but it's, it's subsidized by the taxpayers and the rest of us that have to do this. And I don't, I don't, I see these large dollar amounts of write-offs and I want to be assured, and I think the taxpayers want to be rest assured, that there's diligence being followed to, to get this money, not just, well, Comstar couldn't do it and so the heck with it. Yeah, we so right on. now those types of conversations are handled at the Comstar level. So the bills go out, they're the point of contact for all of our billing related stuff. Every, that, they're the one point and, and that's why their bills say if you have an inability to pay or whatever, call sure. us. And, those are the, and, and they're wonderful. They are wonderful people and they say, you know, this is what you owe, this is what your insurance paid, is there any way, you know, how about an installment, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. As far as South County EMS or somebody else, also reaching out to these individuals, we don't have the resources to do that type of thing. Right. Um, we don't have the resources to do that type of thing, and it puts, yeah. if we did, it puts us into a weird position place. where, you know, like, it, when I call 911, is the, is the tax collector gonna show up? No, I, um, you I, I know, get versus that. Versus, yeah. there, there's a benefit to having a separate th that, that one, billing operation kind of cleaved off, and that is a, a separate, yeah, separate question, separate problem than whatever medical emergency they're having at the time. And, and, and I get, and I get that. And maybe you know when you say it's you don't have the resources. I mean, if if these numbers that I've been seeing are somewhat accurate, we could we could hire a heck of a collection agency for half a million dollars. Yeah. Well, I also, I mean, mm -hmm. like, let's. I don't even want to entertain the idea that six hundred thousand okay, dollars. Okay, right. just, just because I, like You've I don't know how much of that is, is still going to be collected. Right. But when you when you look at that as a percentage of what we are collecting, it's not a failure of us to do our job. I think this is yeah. considering that we are in the mid eighty percentile for all collections, including those uninsured. We're doing excellent compared and, to other. And that yeah. last fifteen percent, there are some communities that have a last thirty percent or a last right. last forty five mm -hmm. percent. So we're doing an excellent job. We're, we're providing humane service and care and consideration to somebody's well-being. And, and this, these write-offs are just the nature of being an, an emergency service that will help you no matter what. And we're not going to swipe your insurance card or your credit card before we load you in the ambulance. Right. I get that. Um, and it's about, you know, you divide it out over the last, oh, how long have we been around? Six years now, you know, um, compared to what we're actually collecting. So. I just, um, I think what's really important, like Zach was saying, it's the combination of the rate. We're, for the insurance rate, we're, we're in the 90 percentile, mid-90s. That's mm -hmm. really good. That's great. And then overall, for the uninsured as well, you we're in the that 85. In, that's pretty good. And so the idea is you, we have to keep an eye on that mid-80 or mm -hmm. over 80 percent range. And if we do, if we we're see in that, that dropping, you're in trouble. then we're in trouble. We're kind of okay, but we've got to figure out how we could, you know, and don't forget this is like full boat, um, the amount that would be uh, considered un uncollectible is your full boat charge, which if you had Medicare or Medicaid anyway, you, it would yeah, be it reduced. Yeah, would be a percentage of that. And Comstar, they have flags, they, if, this has never happened to us, but 
I know this for a fact, if they notice that we drop off in our percentage rate or for whatever reason all of a sudden they're getting bad information, that triggers a flag and I'd get a phone call. And, and we try to work through what's going on. They're, they're impressed with these numbers and they're like, nothing is ever flagged here. We're humming right along, we're doing a great job. Um, and, but we can rest assured that if something were to happen, that we would know about it sooner rather than later. I, I still think that we could do something and work out something that we could try to collect some more of that percentage, just eat it down yeah. a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I think constantly being aware of it and, and, and focusing in on it on a regular basis that because we're monitoring it, we would keep it under control sort of. I don't know. It's also one of the things we haven't sorted out as a new service is how regularly are we going to review the, our write-offs. I mean, right. one of the reasons it gets so, I mean, are we, ca are we going to go five or six years before we do a total write-off? Mm -hmm. You know, it's that kind right. of thing. Right. Right. So we have, to, we have to figure out how we're going to do this on a regular basis and review it on a regular basis, mm -hmm. maybe. Well, and, and from my point of view, is that, you know, if it's a business and you write off things, you know, you, you generate income through less uh, income tax and stuff like this. But basically, when we write this stuff off, we go to the taxpayers for the money. Yes, and that's right. It, it hurts. hurts. Well, it hurts. Hurts. those write-offs, are our projected revenues are just our projected revenues. Those don't include those write-offs. So it's not like every single dollar being written off no, I, means a dollar to the taxpayers. No, we, it, I, like and I understand that because, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, in a sense, it's like a business because it probably doesn't cost you quite as much as you're bi being billed uh, mm -hmm. in some, on that actual run. Right. right. Uh, I get it. All right. Thank you for the explanation. It was very yeah, helpful. Thank Thanks thank guys you. for coming. We'll continue the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And just Next meeting, the, uh, first Thursday. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I hope you feel you. better, too. Um, just want thank to you, point Zach. out. Thank you, you, David. Go? Yes, we did. So just want to point out that you're about half an hour behind schedule. Chris Curtis is here to talk about, briefly talk about the update to the MVP yep. plan and Dick Evans and his group is here oh, for the hearing. Um, okay. Do you want to listen to Chris first? Uh, yes. Yes. And Chris. while Dick is setting up, after Chris speaks, I can give my report. Okay. Because he's got to set up a screen and stuff like that. All right. That. Excuse me for interrupting, mm -hmm. but obviously the speaker system isn't on or isn't oh, working. Oh, we don't really. I'm not hearing very well. Oh, I have I'm a hearing sorry. impairment, but it, it, every time I come in here, can yeah. you turn up the speaker in here, please? John, Jonathan, thank yeah, you. That's much better. Thank you. Appreciate you making that comment. Thanks, Jonathan. Chris, we'll do a better hello. job of talking into so the here, mic um, here. This is the main thing that was updated, um, but so not. I'll try to make this quick. Uh, this is by way of background. Get that as close microphone. as you can. He's right in here. Uh, last year, as you'll recall, the board adopted a municipal vulnerability preparedness plan that we developed. Um, and as a result of that, the state certified Deerfield as a um, certified MVP community. Um, one of the primary goals for the town in, in doing that plan initially was to be able to qualify for um, additional grants from the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs under the MVP program for implementation projects to help the town with climate resiliency. And um, as a result of doing that initial MVP plan, the town was um, successful in getting a second MVP grant that we're currently working on now um, to do several tasks. One is to do um, a design plan for the Mill Village Road culvert, and we have yes. time bond working on that right now. Uh, we're working on floodplain and environmental performance standards um, for the zoning bylaw. And the third piece was to update the MVP plan to make it as current as we possibly could, again, with the goal of trying to get um, specifically into the plan, any infrastructure projects that the town might want to apply for future MVP monies to, to fund. So last September, you hosted a townwide listening session um, to seek public input on possible additions to the plan and improvements. And I think um, the take home message from that meeting, which was pretty well attended, um, was that there were three top priorities for the town. Flooding, flooding, and flooding. And flooding, <laughs> correct. So, um, so tonight, basically, you have before you um, a, an amended MVP plan that we'd like to um, get submitted to the state as, as soon as possible. 
And a quick um, synopsis of the additions that we've made to the plan are that uh, we put in a summary of the listening sessions. Uh, that's on page 53, if you have a copy in front of you of the whole plan. I, uh, that was sent to you. The plan was sent to yeah. us, right. Yeah. I think I have, I'm, I didn't print it out because it was like 77 right. pages. I yeah. <laughs> so I have it on PDF. I, I have a hard copy. But, um, and we have a copy here. The, well, this okay. is the older copy. version. Yeah. But, but he's highlighting the changes. Yes. Right now. Yeah. Thank you. So we basically you know, put in a, a synopsis of all the concerns that residents um, brought up during those listening sessions. We added an entirely new section, which is titled uh, Flooding and Priority Culvert that's, Problem that's Areas. And that was a uh, much more detailed um, inventory and description of the most current culvert issues and problems that the town um, is facing. So it includes, for example, the Kelleher Drive culvert, the yeah. Wamping Road, um, the Bromes Pond Road, the Route 5 at Richardson's Candy yeah. Kitchen. Thank you. Um, and um, the North Main Street um, flooding problems. So all of those are described in great detail. There's photographs that show some of the, the, yep. the you know, severity of the, of the problems. Uh, we also added in a section that deals with the new um, Great River Hydro um, inundation maps and the um, results of, of their um, action plan that uh, have recommendations for flood preparedness so that that's covered as well. And then we updated the recommendation section just to make sure, again, that it reflected the concerns that came out of the listening sessions and that there were recommendations specific to those culvert improvements that we um, might want to seek additional funding for. Um, I just wanted to, um, based on the tabletop exercise we had on November 3rd, um, Beaver Drive area, um, we weren't including that in the um, great hydro inundation and 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 that really was clear that that beaver drive area those residences would be affected tremendously not obviously not as impacted as Sunderland but um, they would be impacted and so we wanted to include them and I I didn't see that um, in the um, in that section I don't okay. think we I, added. I didn't. I didn't know about that. Yeah, um, if you look, if you did played with the inundation um, modeling, that whole Beaver Drive area is underwater, okay. and, and and we weren't really aware of that before they had the modeling. Um, so as, that seems like something that would need to be taken up with Great River Hydro, and their maps amended. Well, what we wanted to do was to make sure that. We had code red. We that we had because we only have about three hours uh, um, before it hits Old Deerfield, and there yeah, were probably about five be, or something before it gets to Beaver Drive. Correct? Yeah, we had only additional. Uh, it wasn't even two hours, but it was. It was there was additional time for it to go up and over and then come back down. But um, we had not, um, you know, set aside a separate code red. Um, notification and, and that included Beaver Drive and I, I wanted to make sure that a whole neighborhood area Ward Avenue that whole area was the lower end of River Road was um, notified okay. um, well, and, we, and, and and part of this um, flood inundation um, I, I don't know how I mean if you go on the Great Hydro um, website we can give you the password and you can look at it but it was, um, we, we wanted to make sure that that wasn't forgotten. Okay. Well, I can certainly make mention of that mm -hmm. in the report, but right. again, I think in order to get the inundation maps amended, that would have to be done through Great River Hydro. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no, they have it on the yeah, map. Yeah, they have them. They have, the it's already ready. in the mapping. Oh, okay. We, yep. we as a community, I have, I mean, it was me. I, I didn't feel that I had, um, I was like, oh, I didn't realize that. I, I know that there was a problem with Sunderland and that Sunderland was going to get totally underwater. But I, I, I thought Beaver Drive and Ward Avenue and all the, that lower end was just enough. Um, but with the, yes. with the failure of the Harriman Dam and the Sherman Dam, it was going to be. So we would need to make a motion to approve the, the amended. Right. So I make a motion to approve the amended um, MVP. MVP program. And um, with, with, the, with the changes that we've all made. Mm -hmm. 
I second that. Any further discussion? Aye. Aye. Sorry, aye. 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 <laughs> I'm jumping aye. the gun on that. I, I'm really appreciative you did this. Yes, and, thank and you very much. Because we want to get into the next round of funding. Yeah, and I was going to mention that that might be coming up this month. So, you know, be prepared. We'll, we'll probably be coming back it to you with an application for Wonderful. For it funds. was supposed to be actually a couple weeks ago. So I'm assuming it will happen pretty soon. Exactly, yeah. So thank thanks you. very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank thanks you. for all your work. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, Dick, if they want to set up now. And I'll give my report, a little bit of report while yeah, they're go ahead. Sure. while the stage crew is setting up. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, we'll be getting out our, our audit soon from the auditors, and uh, something came up, and I said, please do put it in the management letter, and that is about procurement. Uh, when they asked me for contracts and information, I only knew about three of the five, or two of the five items. So I said, please do put that in the report so we can really make sure all our department heads are complying with procurement requirements. It turned out that they had done fine, but it needs to be known, you know, it, uh, the, right. So as we discussed, um, because of Connor's certification and experience with procurement, he will take on that role Thank you, um, going forward. So, but I just wanted to let you know, I told the auditors go ahead and put that in the letter. So. Okay. Um, uh, we've gotten the letter from uh, Council of Governments again for District Local Technical Assistance, DLTA projects. Uh, Connor and Diana, John Waite and Pat Smith from FERCOG uh, met today because Pat is retiring, our longtime professional planning consultant that's worked with the town. She's retiring next week. Wow. So we thought it was a good opportunity to do a, the, the um, word I've used is brain dump, you know, with all her knowledge and experience. And I think that was helpful. And out of that came some ideas for DLTA projects. So be between now and your next meeting, we'll be sending you information and sending you the document that FERCOG sent us. Okay. Um, you're meeting on, we're meeting Friday at 5.30 mm -hmm. okay, here. Okay. Um, two items on the agenda. Um, also, next week's meeting, or next meeting, other than Friday, your regular meeting, will be on the 23rd. Um, uh, the folks from UMass, the, agri uh, the ag fields people, I have been in contact with them. I sent them a letter per your concerns. They responded. They agreed to come in and talk. So I think there will be three people from UMass coming at 6.30 for that meeting. So um, select board meeting starts at what time that night? Um, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Okay. I've got Unless you want to change it. Well, I've got negotiations meeting at 4.30. I think it's Talk to them. Be, I don't think it'll be that super long, but I'll get here as soon as I can. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, what team. time is the meeting on the 14th? Uh, six. Six. Six? And, uh, okay. Trevor's going to talk about that, yeah. actually. Oh, okay. A little bit. Yep. Um, also, at your next meeting, we'll have our, um, the select board budgets in front of you. I mean, we'll get them before then, but hopefully you'll have read through and uh, asked us any questions in the staff. Um, also, I've asked Diane Cornwell, who's been doing the consulting with our South County Senior Center, to, to get the report done and either come present. in and present it or present it through somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, she may be on scheduled on that meeting as well. Um, we also probably have an executive session to talk about what our collective bargaining strategy will be for the police contract. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you put off the concom, or you made that? Oh, you may make another concom decision at yes. that okay, appointment. Um, research. And again, we will have the classification and compensation plan on the agenda, and possibly either Bob Lesko or some other discussion around that sewer, or the uh, sewer assessment. Yep. Yeah. Um, Diana will be on vacation um, from I think the 28th through February 6th. So. Mm -hmm. And I'll be here. Connor will be here. And I think that's all I want to say right now. I just want to. Okay. So, do you have any questions for me? No. Um, I just I'll follow up after this hearing because we're right behind. But I wanted to follow up um, with Jim McGovern and um, Richie Neal's office on our application for the sewer stuff. As soon as we get have our meeting on the 14th, I want to. Okay. Jump on that. Yeah, and I, uh, we can talk about it because I have a couple contacts. I want to make sure that 
I, I'm, I'm not sure who to reach out to in Richie Neal's office, but John Nadelsky. Um, I have his staff schedule in um, right. In McGovern's office, is, he's got a good background and he understands USDA mm -hmm. stuff really well. So I wanted you to, to make sure. the local office, yeah. Right, in Northampton. So I wanted to make sure that, I mean, it's such a critical to us. I wanted to make sure that he was reaching out to the USDA for us. What was the cost of that application anyways for, to the cricket? Um, I'm not sure. I, I can't remember. What, how much did it cost for Prickett to do the application? Uh, is it 18? Or, I'm getting, I'm lost because there's two parts, the 18 and the 35,000. I think it's 18. I, think it was eight, I thought it was 18. And 35 was for the next, for this, we'll talk about on the yeah, 14th. Yeah, we can talk about it, but I, I, yeah. it's hugely important. Okay. You want to do the... Um, I guess we'll move on to uh, hear from uh, Sun Incorporated about the marijuana uh, cultivation special sure. permit. This is actually a public hearing. Yeah, do you want to read the hearing, hearing notice? Yes. Yes, yes we need to do that. Do you want me to? Sure. Oh, okay. Um, so, Town of Deerfield Select Board Notice of Hearing. The Select Board of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on January 9th at 7 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373, on the application of Sun Ma Sun's Mass, Inc., in accordance with the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 179, Article 4, Section 46. 50 medical marijuana treatment centers and section 4660 marijuana establishments um, Berkshire design group on behalf of Suns Mass Inc has prepared this request for a special permit the proposed project involves constructing a marijuana cultivation facility at 198 Mill Village Road map 94 lots 4 5 9 13 14 15, 16, and 17, which is currently owned by Pioneer Gardens. The proposed use of the, of the site includes renovation and conversion of existing 2.6 acre greenhouse, construction of a new 33,000 square foot building for harvesting, drying, and shipping, includes reconstruction of parking lot, new utility connections, stormwater management, and landscaping. While the planning board is designated as a special permit granting authority for marijuana cultivation for non-medical use purposes, the select board is designated as the special permit granting authority for medical marijuana cultivation. Product, uh, product for this facility is intended to be supplied to registered dispensaries for medical and non-medical purposes. Therefore, the proposed land use would qualify as both a cultivation only medical marijuana treatment center and a marijuana establishment subcategorized as a marijuana cultivator under the Deerfield zoning bylaw. This is an application for a special permit from the select board for medical marijuana cultivation. Select board members Henry Camosa Chair, Trevor McDaniel, Karen Shores Ness. They're on, Mr. Evans. Well, Welcome. good evening, Mr. Good Chairman. Evening. Uh, my name is Richard Evans, and I'm uh, counsel for Sons Mass Inc., the proponent of the application tonight. Uh, with me tonight is the director of security for the operation, Blake Gilmore, and Yap Molinar, the, one of the owners of Pioneer Gardens. And I'm assisted tonight by Ezra Parzebach and uh, Mark Jarvis, who are consultants who do work for us from time to time, and uh, I'm grateful for their assistance with the PowerPoint. What I'd like to do is take you through a presentation in which we hope to address all the points, all the requirements of the bylaw with regard to this application. It's uh, not short, but we, uh, we want it, we'd rather be thorough. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we invite you to stop, and we also invite any members of the public, too, to stop us at any time if there's any questions. If I hope we can answer them. We, we don't have the benefit tonight of the civil engineer um, who has gone through this in some detail with the planning board. Um, I hope if you do have questions about the engineering, I hope they're not too complicated, but I'll try my best. 
So the, the, the uh, proposal, as you know, is to operate a medical marijuana cultivation operation at the, uh, the Pioneer Gardens facility at 196 uh, Mill Village Road. This would be in conjunction, as you know, with the non-medical cultivation operation for which application has been made to the planning board. I'd like to uh, just review some background that, that brings us to this point today. It's really hard to believe that we are here in the town hall talking about legalization of marijuana as a reality and not as a, a fantasy or an aspiration. Um, we can go back many years, but 2008 is a good place to start when uh, there was a, a question two on the statewide ballot, which passed by a vote of 65%, I believe, and Deerfield was just about the same level. Uh, in 2012, there was a um, uh, medical marijuana initiative, which uh, Deerfield, again, supported vigorously. Uh, in 2013, uh, town meeting adopted a section of the bylaw governing medical marijuana. In 2016, the uh, voters of Massachusetts uh, said yes to legalization um, by uh, about 54%, and Deerfield again was above the state average. And then Deerfield uh, amended its bylaws to uh, accommodate the, the new rules in uh, l the, the earlier this year, which we're all very, we all remember very well. So, there are two parties before you, basically. There's Sons Mass Inc., who was the proponent, and Pioneer Gardens, who are the owners of the property and, and hope to enter into this deal with, with Sons Mass, whereby Sons Mass will take over the cultivation, take over the greenhouse operation. But Pioneer Gardens hopes to remain alive and well in Deerfield. If this project can go through, then Pioneer Gardens proposes to make a significant investment in the town and enlarge their own operations at another location. They're going to expand their, their staff and their, their outdoor production. They hope to build a new greenhouse with a more state-of-the-art and, and facilities that are more carefully attuned to their particular operations and their production needs. And again, they will remain, continue to do wholesale only, pretty much what they've been doing all along. They don't expect they're going to move and they're going to grow, but they're not going to change uh, the, the substance of, of, of their operation. Uh, Sons Mass will do a uh, license to cultivation for medical and non-medical. And, of course, <clears throat> wholesale only. No retail sales whatsoever. And I should add that there is no proposal at this time to do any product manufacture. There's been talk about coming back to the town and seeing if the zoning could be changed, but... That's in the future. We're not, that's not before us tonight. You, you know Pioneer Gardens very well. They are excellent um, members of the Deerfield community. And they have developed an outstanding reputation all up and down the East Coast. They, they provide uh, plants to big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and such uh, all over the nation. They're very well established and very successful. The, the facility, as you know, is on Mill Village Road, the green outlined there is, is the current footprint. Uh, it's right next door to the uh, Melnick Farm where they have the anaerobic aer aerator, I think it's called. Digester, anaerobic Digest. digester. Actually, it's, you couldn't find a better location in town for this operation being next door to, to this farm. So there we are located in the region uh, and, and I call your attention to the scale here, 2,000 feet. So as you can see, there's hardly anything besides the anaerobic digester uh, within 2,000 feet of the facility. So here's what we're going to do, what we hope to do. Uh, this, is the, this is the present, uh, present footprint. We are acquiring the uh, residential parcel uh, to the northwest there, which currently belongs to Arian that will be added to the greenhouse parcel, together with the Davis parcel. Uh, so that will all become one parcel of land. And, and uh, Sons Mass is also acquiring title 
to the uh, three ag fields there, north of the greenhouse. But they will remain in agriculture and they will remain subject to a long-term lease to Pioneer Gardens or, or an entities of theirs. They are not under APR? They are, those three are under APR. But we're not, we're, not, we're not doing anything that's going to violate the okay. RPA. It's very much, it's going to be, actually we're signing a 15 year lease. So it's going to stay in agriculture for, okay. forever. We can't break the APR we don't, and we're not trying to. Okay. We want it to remain in APR, I okay. mean in, in agriculture. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> we will be building a, a processing building next to the greenhouse. But it won't even be visible from the road. So, here are the criteria for a special permit. Um, it's allowable in the residential agricultural district, and we are in the residential agricultural district. Uh, with a special permit from the board, according to these provisions of law. And here, we, the um, Suns Mass is in, has their application in the CCC now. It's, they're well along that process. They don't have their final yet, but, um, Obviously, they've got a few steps to take, but, but and I have a, a mountain of paper I can provide you if you want that they've submitted to the CCC. I'm not sure that you need it. If you, if you do, let me know, but uh, it's, it's available. There are buffer zones. We can't be within 500 feet of the school or a daycare center <coughs> or a place where children congregate. The 500 limit, foot limit is, a, is about a third of that smaller uh, circle in the middle. But there are none of those facilities around. <coughs> so the, 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 the determination, the ultimate determination as to whether a special permit should be granted comes down to, 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 the, to the test that you will have to determine or have to make, which is whether the benefit of the proposed use uh, outweigh the detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. So here are the so-called mandatory considerations <coughs> For, the, um, um, for that determination. I've, I've, I'm going to give you something I worked up the other day. It's a, um, what I call the criteria for determination. <clears throat> I've taken those two factors, the benefits of the proposed use, the detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood, <clears throat> headed two columns thus, and then listed all of these mandatory considerations and a number of additional considerations. So let me give you that now so you can follow along. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, under social economic community needs, the, uh, what this project will mean is new jobs for, for uh, Sons Mass, about 50 new, new, new jobs that, that they expect to, uh, to offer. Uh, Pioneer Gardens will also be adding new, new jobs, about 20 new employees if this project can goes through. And of course, since they're building a new greenhouse, that means an increased tax base for the town, as well as that, as that new processing building brings a new um, tax base. And as you know, under the host agreement, the uh, project is required to give priority for, uh, to local contractors and local vendors for their work, and also to local residents for, as employees of the new facilities. So those are some of the social, economic, and <clears throat> community needs, needs sir. As for traffic, we really don't expect any, tra any change in traffic, except that the truck traffic uh, that we now experience with Pioneer Gardens will be diminished. Car traffic will stay about the same. It's basically employees. Truck traffic will, will reduce, will diminish. What, um, from the digester point of view, um, when is your peak periods of traffic related to the digester? Um, your, yeah. 7 to 9 in the morning? Yeah. And so you don't anticipate, um, I'm, I'm thinking of the impact on the neighborhood, so um, you don't anticipate 
any more increase in traffic? You do not anticipate any more increase in traffic in the, that would conflict with what is already happening at the digester in the morning? We don't expect any increase in traffic from current operations. Okay. From vehicular traffic. Okay. Uh, as I said, the truck and certainly not would, in the morning. Well, I'm not sure what their shift hours are going to be in the new place. That's that's flexible, I suspect. I can't tell you okay. why that now. Can I ask why you expect um, truck traffic to decrease from what's going on there now? Because the, versus what you'd be doing as an yeah, operation. Yeah, because the the marijuana operation just does not have the same requirements for transportation that that to perennials do. There's lots less stuff to carry. So the traffic will decrease there, but it will truck increase. traffic. The truck traffic will decrease there, but will increase somewhere else wherever the new. Uh, garden facility is. Oh, maybe. We're just going to relocate yeah. it from one location to yeah, another. Maybe. Sure. Yes. 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 In terms of the adequacies of utilities, we are bringing in a new water main to serve fire needs. Other than that, there are no substantial infrastructure upgrades needed or anticipated. Uh, the neighborhood character won't change a bit. The place will look very similar to uh, how it does now. I've got some pictures to show you in a few minutes that will give you a better idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, we don't anticipate any in impact whatsoever on the uh, natural environment. Obviously, this project allows uh, Pioneer Gardens to keep its ag land in agriculture, in responsibly, uh, environmentally responsible agriculture, I should add. So all growing will be inside and not um, using outdoor um, irrigation at all? The marijuana growing, yes, yes. that's true. Okay. Yes. Uh, potential impacts on town services, town base, and employment. Well, we've got new jobs, uh, an enlarged tax base. There's no drain on town services, plus significant new revenue to, uh, to the town through the community host agreement. Yeah, this, I'm repeating myself there with new jobs, new structures, no undue demand on town services, new revenue. And you're familiar with the host agreement, which provides priority for businesses and employees uh, $25,000 to support educational programs and public health. They will, the company will be providing regular reports to you. Um, we have an extensive security plan, and Mr. Gilbert is prepared to discuss it with you tonight without giving you all the details, but give you an overview tonight. Uh, and something that's in your host agreement, which I hadn't seen in any other, is that you have the right to approve the, uh, the manager of the place. Yes. So you have a lot of control there. It's, it's the only town I've seen that has that language in its uh, host agreement. <clears throat> and uh, there's a clause <clears throat> that um, forbids the um, company from contesting local taxes, and that's, that's, we see that in a lot of host agreements. You know, you know uh, Yap and Aryan at Pioneer Gardens, longtime friends of Deerfield. We, we, uh, or they held a hope open house in, December, in November and invited the entire uh, community and you were personally invited to come and take a look around and hear their plans for doing what we're talking about tonight. We had a good turnout and a good discussion. Oh, and by the way, no, I'm sorry, it's different. Okay, here's some pictures I want to show you of a facility in Maryland that's uh, operated um, very similar to how we expect to operate. There'll be a guardhouse like that at the end of the driveway at, on Mill Village Road. This is from inside the guardway. There'll be uh, state-of-the-art um, technology. I'm gonna zip through these. This is not a mom and pop operation. Security cameras. Part of the seat to sail stuff. Okay, um, here are some of the plans. This is the um, <clears throat> an overall lot plan. It just shows the boundaries in which I showed you earlier. Nothing, 
nothing new here, I don't think. And here's the <clears throat> neighborhood plan with the radius. Uh, here is the site plan showing the existing building and the new building and the other major features of the site. Those uh, round circles at the top, those are large cisterns that collect rainwater and they will, they will remain. We expect them to be used. Oh, there's a new septic system going in there. That's the one on the little bottom. Lots of new uh, um, screening, evergreen hedges. Um, you're not going to notice a lot of difference. It'll be upgraded a bit, but it's not going to change a whole lot. Well, I just put this in here to remind us of why, why we're here, why we have zoning to um, <clears throat> protect public health and safety, encourage the appropriate use of land, to preserve the agricultural heritage of the community, increase the many of this town. Um, that's what we're accomplishing here. We're accomplishing the actual purposes of Deerfield Zoning. And the um, Pioneer Gardens and, and Sons Mass are both very grateful for your considering this application and for determining, making a determination about their eligibility for special permit. And with that, we will take any questions that you may have. I'm sorry, I didn't happen to see on the plans, how tall is a new building? The greenhouse won't be any taller than it is now. Not the greenhouse. The new the processing th building? Yes. I think about the same. It's, it's, it's a one-story building. So roughly 18 feet. I would say tops. Are there any questions from the audience or any of the neighbors? Steve, Kathy, anybody? Think? Kathy. If you want to come up to them. Do you, you mind coming up to the sure. microphone? Thanks. Speak from the audience if someone would repeat the question, that would mm -hmm. be helpful. Sure. Uh, Steve had one question. Um, we were concerned. I know the they're going to cut uh, some of the greenhouse off because it's too close to our line. But our concern was um, which way the the air is going to flow. We don't want the air flowing towards the farm because Peter's house is right there, and. Um, you know, we want it to go either out back where there's fields or the other way. I don't know what's, who's on the other side that would be affected by it, but that was our concern, so. When you say the airflow, the natural airflow? I don't know. I, there's okay. a vent. You're talking the vents from, yes. the, from the greenhouse. Yes, and the exhaust, okay. yeah. Yeah, there will be vents that are equipped with a technology called a fog co, and it's pretty sophisticated. I still don't want it pointing yeah. towards the farm. No, I don't, I'm That's sure. our cows, you know, I mean, I don't know what it will do to happy. the, yeah, we you know, we have a hay cows. barn there and, <laughs> happy cows. you know, so. Um, do you have, do you have that um, information, Dick? I can get it to you. I'm sure the engineer has it. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I know that was a huge concern in California lately of, of just the smell coming from these facilities, and they may not have been instituting this kind of technology that you're talking about, but I do want to minimize. 
Yeah, and we, and we should be able to that you're going to yeah. smell. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we have a manure. dairy farm next door, right. which does not smell wonderful either. But, right, but, but it's that's not a more of a farmer thing. Yeah. Uh, so this um, is a farm town, but we we should it should be able to be um, satisfactorily addressed mm -hmm. at this point since it is part of the design. Well, I'm confident it will be, but I'll get you the particulars. Yes, thank you. If you will. Engineer. Yeah. See, on the lower lower right hand side, mm -hmm. that dark area, that little rectangle, that's the part that's going to be removed. So as right, to, that's to, the 25 feet. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's the you know mm -hmm. that's right where our barn is too. So okay, you know that goes right on to there's calves there, there's feed, so I, yep. we just yep. don't want it. Sure, I, I absolutely agree with you. And okay. Peter's be, house. So yeah, I, I understand that those greenhouses that are currently there are a hoop type building. But does the ridge of those buildings head north, south, or east, west? They're north, south. They're, they're north, south. Okay. Well, in, in the information that was provided by Berkshire Design Group, that the uh, fence would be on the ends of the building. So they would either be facing the Melnick's property or facing the other road. Okay. And, and that's where this is what they look like if you, if you guys want to see it. Yeah. And what it is. What it is, is there's a, a piping system where they release some sort of a, I, I don't want to say chemical, but it's a neutralization type thing that actually alters the scent of the marijuana, or that's what they say it does. And these are mounted on. So if they'll be on the north side of the building. North side is, is okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So if, I just want to interrupt a second. If, if you have another question, could you come up? I, I just wanted the public to hear it as well, because yeah. it's a very valid point. I want to hear that. Sorry. Thank you. Is this the area where it connects? Yeah. Where the property line is, yeah. You have to get your land for the, to cover all this, right? So you're purchasing the land on Child's Crossroad. Am I correct? We're, we're purchasing those three parcels. Right. right. But the land on Child's Crossroad. One of, them, one of them goes up to Charles Cross, right. parcel five right. does. So yes. my question is, is what's the, and the connection here, what's the fencing, is the fencing and all that? Oh, well, there, there is perimeter fencing. Uh, okay. Blake, you want to? No, the, the perimeter fencing goes around the, the greenhouses. Is this so in other fence? words, that area that you're pointing, right, right there. That, that so, the fence, that no, fence? it doesn't go around the field. The field will stay open. Okay. It's just the facility right there that's going to have the fence. Right, well, again, I don't have my specs, but the, the, the fence is going to go, here's the fence. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the fence. This is going to be a concrete, this, is, this back wall here is going to be concrete blocks. Because we can't put, this is wetlands back here. Yeah. We can't put the fence up that back here, so we'll just the wetlands. So in lieu of a fence, we're going to just make this wall solid. And this has been approved by the police chief. Okay. Yeah, and so then the fence will go. This is fence? That's right. This is fence. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, that leads me to another question. Uh, I'm not sure if it, I know it's part of our bylaws, but I don't know if it's a state requirement that a fence be around the entire facility. So. One could argue you could have a steel or concrete building. Does it still require the fence? No, I don't think it's in the bylaw. Is it a concrete wall? Steel. Consistency rules. It's okay. There's no point putting a fence back here. It's not just a wall. Well, no, I understand. You know, it makes sense to me. But what I'm saying is that you know, I've seen other facilities that are concrete. And they still have a fence, and I I don't know. And that's what I was asking you: Is it a requirement of the state that these facilities be have a, a perimeter fence? There is a requirement of a perimeter fence. Okay. 
but we have, I don't know if it's a formal waiver or, or what, but in lieu of defense of the fact, we're doing the concrete wall, so as to avoid disturbing the weapons. Um, maybe Blake, would you mind um, just going over the security plan sure. in, in general? Um, I know uh, you've worked it out with John, but yep. it would be nice to hear it just publicly. So okay, a, so a basic overview. The facility will have a fence. The reason for the for the block wall in the back is because of the wetlands, and they can't put the fence <coughs> there. So that's why they're building the wall. They're in with it, and I think uh, Dick might have mentioned that the CCC has got to approve that anyway. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's part of what we did some research and found out that it is acceptable. Um, along with that, there will be personnel that will be checking people in and out. There will be a gatehouse. And th then when business is at the end of the day and the place is locked up, it will be monitored. And what we have is a, a virtual monitoring system where you have an off-site location that is monitoring and the way I understand this, because obviously we don't have it in place now, but my understanding from the company is that every inch of this place will be monitored by video. The other part of it is it has um, the component that if somebody gets onto the property, they can actually talk to them from the monitoring uh, service as they're calling for the police, the security people to come in as well. So the other part of this is an alarm system that goes in. And that will be activated if somebody tries to get over the fence or tries to get into the building itself or the, the, the greenhouses themselves. So along with that, there's a, there's a card system that's going to work on the doors in there. And personnel that have been hired there could be hired for specific reasons. They only have access to certain parts of the building. And then obviously people that, like security and everybody, and even law enforcement that would have access to the entire facility to be able to get through there, along with the fire department, because again, public safety is going to be an issue. But we will have, you know, somebody that's in the area that could respond when, when local fire, local police are responding as well to make sure that they do have full access to everything that's there. Uh, full background check on all the employees. So I mean, you got you know, even if it's somebody from town, if they've got a record, we're going to have a problem with it. So full Corey check, and then even beyond that, um, the security system is is pretty elaborate from what I've seen and what I've been involved in in the past, and I've been in a lot of security situations with uh, Boston and, and around. And these guys are very serious about security. And they want to make sure that it, this place is absolutely safe, and that's my goal too, mm -hmm. is to make sure that. The town is safe, and we're going to hopefully prevent anybody from thinking that they they can get into the place and, and deter them from trying to get in there. So, and as far as it goes, you know, there, there's there's going to be some changes with this, and I, I want to make sure that we, you know, and I'm sure that Dick will take care of that as far as uh, letting you know that if something comes up during the construction part of this or anything else that occurs that may have a change in it that will make sure that you're aware of it so that you, you can actually handle those questions. Because again, we don't want you to be blindsided with anything either. So mm -hmm. I'm actually traveling to Maryland in another week to the facility that they had the pictures on there. And I'm going to go through and actually catalog everything that they've done to that facility to make sure I bring it up to this facility as well. And so you feel mm -hmm. um, comfortable um, how you, you're going to work this out with John Pachorik? On, yes, on absolutely. Maybe. John and I have talked probably about a dozen times now since I've been back around the area. So he's very happy with what we're doing, and I'm keeping him abreast of everything that we're doing as well. So he's, he's good with it. Okay. Great. Rocky, you have Welcome, a question? Rocky. Rocky Foley, South Main Street. I'm just one uh, case of power failure. So you have to have a backup uh, there'll generator. Be, there'll be generators. So the whole system won't yep. go down. The generators will be there. And definitely, yeah, they, they cannot have any interruption in the service, so they've got to have backup set up for that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Very good. Well, I would just uh, like to add to my, my list of, of, of uh, criteria or benefits of the proposed use. I mentioned the, I mentioned the, I mentioned the mandatory um, considerations, but there are also a number of discretionary considerations like public health. Uh, this is going to provide a clean, tested, professionally grown product. Uh, it will hopefully reduce the black market. Uh, this, this project helps bring the uh, cannabis industry out of the shadows. Um, there will be substantial financial benefit to the town through the uh, um, host agreement. We, we have a solid uh, 
security plan and the support of the local police. Uh, we will be working cooperatively with all the departments of, of the town in order to achieve the common objectives which uh, were set forth there. The uh, scenery isn't going to change much. The, the landscape, the viewscape from Mill Village Road won't change. 30 to 50 new jobs, priority local contractors and vendors, uh, upgrading using the existing land, upgrading the facilities, um, and uh, keeping the ag land and agriculture. And the last thing on my list here, this respects the intention of the Deerfield voters who all supported legalization and the medical majority and decrim. Sorry? The majority of them did. Absolutely. Not all of them. That's, majority is enough in a democracy. Yes, it is. Uh, and I think given the thoroughness with which we have approached this, I think we're setting a good precedent because you're likely to have three or four, two, three or four more applications behind us. And I imagine you think you have one already. And I hope that, that the way you approach and handle this application and the way we've handled this application will serve as a model for all those who come behind us. Thank you. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just had some questions for Yop. Um, Yop, could you come up and tell us um, the positive impact to your business and why are you pursuing this? Um, yes. Um, um, what it will do is, um, as Dick already stated in this uh, presentation, that it uh, allows us to financially come over the um, uh, burden of the uh, hurricane that, uh, that visited us and, and left us with quite a bit of damage. So we will be in a financially very strong position and therefore be able to uh, one lo relocate and, and invest in, in more planting stock and all those kind of things that will that the marketplace frankly also uh, demands that there's a lot of uh, consolidation in the industry so where 20 years ago we could uh, our average customer would buy a lot less and would be happy with the assortment that we have nowadays there is a lot of consolidation so our customers are there's less customers but they're bigger and for us to be relevant in the marketplace for the next who knows but let's say 10 20 years we have to be able to offer that kind of quantity as well, and this will do this will do that for us. When you talk about relocating, you still will be in Deerfield. We will. Um, there's a couple sites, but we will be within about a mile from where we're now. Okay. I just wanted people to be aware of that. I I know that was your plan, but right. I think it's important to realize that you know um, Irene did a lot of damage to your business, mm -hmm. and um, that you're trying to secure. Right. Being going forward, um, right. too. So that's that's really important. Yeah, and then the relocation will be the, the greenhouse, but the fields itself will be the, the identical fields, basically. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Okay. Are there any questions? Come on up, sir. Uh, <clears throat> point of clarification. Are the greenhouses going to be on APR land? No, no. Adjacent to APR land? Yeah, the, 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 this parcel abuts the APR land. Does the APR land have access other than through the uh, frontage uh, where the greenhouses are going to be? Yes. Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. But you can't get from the APR land to the greenhouse, though, because there's a fence there. Pardon? Correct. You can't get from the APR land to the greenhouse. Because right. There's a fence. But there is and access there to the APR land. The parcels of do a butt. Yeah. That's fine. But where's the road going to be to get to the APR land? Child's, Child's Crossroads. Cross Child's, Child's Crossroads. Cross Cross front, it's frontage on Child's Crossroads. There's frontage on Child's Crossroads. Oh. Yeah. Right. Does, uh, do you have a, a lighting bylaw such that obviously these are going to be lighted probably in the evening? that will not spill over light onto the abutting property? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, I, okay. It's a funny thing about light. You can, direct, you can direct the light in a lot of different ways, and so it doesn't shine, but light goes everywhere. So when it hits something, it reflects back, so the lights will light up the area. Okay. But they can be directed. 
I'm Joe Zagrodner from the Hadley Planning Board, and we've had some controversy regarding lighting, and so one foot candle measured to the property line is what we how we measure it. And then, uh, well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Okay. I guess we can close the public hearing at this time. There will be hearing with the planning board. We'll I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Record of vote if you want to do that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anything that you guys would like to talk about this? Do you have any comments, Just right? the reasons. I, I, it was very informative. I liked, I liked uh, all the information you provided, the security plan I'm excited it about. Um, it would help if, uh, for writing the decision if you could list the reasons that you're either in favor or not in favor. Mm, yeah, um, I wasn't quite ready yet, but I will. Sure, at some point. <laughs> Definitely do that. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm just happy with the, with the uh, again, the thoroughness that you've had in this application process. and. Um, and you're taking care of the community, the, the space that's there, you know, building a giant um, spotlight and, um, you know, being a detriment to the neighborhood. Um, so uh, I, I don't have a lot of questions other than I'm, I'm assuming the planning board is doing their site plan review and stormwater stuff and uh, I trust that board to do all that. I'm, um, if it, I'm in favor of this because um, I, I feel like um, they addressed the vent question, which was a valid question. Um, it doesn't uh, seemingly impact or add additional traffic to the neighborhood. Um, I know there was some concern when the digester went in that there was going to be um, a lot of truck traffic, and you know I fielded a lot of calls on that, but um, it. Since the digester's gone in, there hasn't, you know, I haven't had any complaints. So I'm assuming that people are satisfied and this is not going to conflict with the traffic um, time. So um, that's, that's important to me that the impact on the neighborhood is minimal. The look of the neighborhood is not going to change. Um, any of the impacts seem to be mitigated. Um, as from a neighborhood point of view. So um, I'm, I'm supportive of this. I'm supportive because this will um, support um, the continuing of Pioneer Gardens. I, I know um, I felt personally very badly as chair of the conservation district that um, YAP in, in the tropical storm Irene damages was not able to access any federal funding because he grew plants rather than food. So there was no financial help whatsoever from the federal government. Um, his losses were multiple, multiple years. Um, it was perennial plants that have to grow two or three years um, before they are ready to sell. And um, he had a really good reputation. I also know the market has changed, whereas you used to supply like White Flower Farm, which was a smaller, um, a retailer operation and high end, um, you know, you're having bigger, like Home Depot kind of customers now. So I, I feel like this will help Pioneer Gardens transition to the future. So I'm very supportive of that. So I think there's more positive reasons than not to support this application. My main finding is um, kind of where it set out from the beginning. Um, I'm in favor because of economic development and help for our farmers. And that was really my goal from the beginning is to support our farmers and to bring economic development and hopefully have some good funds for education um, and mitigation. So I'm glad that the host agreement will accomplish that and uh, provide jobs, local jobs to local contractors in the construction and then long-term local employees, hopefully. So. And I'm, I trust in the security plan. I trust in the chief and, and Mr. Gilmore to do, do the right thing. Um, I, I would just like to add to, I, I've known Blake for many years and I feel that the safety of our community is in good hands because mm -hmm. he knows that it's Thank important. You. So um, I'm comfortable with that as well. 
Well, I'll take from that too. I mean, I've known Blake for a long time, and, and I, it's reassuring to know that someone local is going to be there looking at it. it that, and, and I do believe overall this will be a safe facility. It doesn't diminish my concern that this type of a, a thing is going to be in our community anyways, because there's a lot of people who just don't think the way they should, and it, it's a target. Uh, and, reacting to Blake's words that they want to do everything they can to deter it. So these people know that this is not going to be an easy place to get to and, you know, to stop any of it. But it's still, it's a target. And, um, but I think overall um, it is going to help the, the folks at Pioneer Garden and I understand their hardship. Um, I don't think that it really is something our community needs. Uh, but uh, that being said, uh, I don't think that the traffic is going to uh, get any better or any worse. I think it's going to re be the same. The traffic that's going to be diminished uh, by the, this operation is going to be transferred to another location wherever Pioneer Garden sets up. But I don't think that's a problem at all either. Uh, I think that there's adequate services. Um, you know, the impact on the environment, I, other than the odor of it, and, I don't live close enough where I don't think it's going to bother me, but you know I do sympathize with the people who live around there. Um, as far as preserving the character of the neighborhood, you know there's a large group of people that were all upset that there was going to be a 9,000 square foot steel building, but now we're going to have a, a 33,000 square foot steel building in, in farmland area, and it, it's not the type of farmland that I would picture, but um, overall uh, I think that the um, potential for the financial uh, benefits to the community is going to um, outweigh the detriments of it. I think that we can turn our heads and not really focus on something that we don't, some of us might not particularly like to see because, you know, it's there. Um, I don't think it's going to destroy the neighborhood. <coughs> and for those reasons, I would support this as well. So I'll make a motion to approve um, the special permit. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, if you, if you just want to sign. Yeah. Mr. Williams. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for letting us uh, <laughs> rumble yeah. around here. And thank you very your much. Meeting. Yeah, I really appreciate okay. all your work. And thank you. if you have any questions in the future, please we reach sure out will. to me. I'll be around. I'm gonna be, I've been in the town office for the last two weeks. <laughs> I'll be in here for another six months. So I'm sure. You can grab me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. There's one more thing that I was going to do during my report. Which, um, are you finished on this? I just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. Connor's, if anybody Connor's has extra materials, out. I'll take them for the file. If you don't want to hold on to them. Nope, sure. Perfect. Um, after many months of asking, I finally have a six-month report on the um, <coughs> the revenues from inspections to share with you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So you can see, and it's, it's from July through oh, the end oh, of December. Here. Yep. <coughs> I don't have it. I was given a hard copy, so I, you know, I don't have it. So these are building permits? Just so you can read it over the week. <laughs> from July forward. Great. It's really helpful to have. Thank you. This is good. We used to get this report all the time. Yeah, I've been trying for a long time. <laughs> no, this is yeah. very helpful. I know. It's nice it's to right finally there. have it's this. Right there. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever Thank seen you. this. Thank you. Great. Um, can, can we go back to your report, Wendy? Yes. Okay. Um, I... I just wanted us mm -hmm. as a board no. to um, Do you want it? make, make sure we supported oh, Wendy right. reaching out to um, sure. Richie Neal's office because I don't know who, who to contact. So I'm hoping that you know who to contact in his office. Are you meaning relative to the wastewater project? Yes. yes. Okay. I started to write that down. Then I figured we would discuss it at the 14th, which will be okay. part yes. of the yes, it right will. on topic. I, yep. I think John Nadelsky. But I, I, yeah, I know. Um, Do you I'll, know John? He was, he yes, was actually under Obama. He was the... Um, he was a um, USDA he, person. Right? Yes, he, he worked in the FSA um, farm 
-hmm. Services Agency. He was the director, so he knows all the ag programs and he's very familiar with mm -hmm. USDA um, mechanisms and stuff. So I think he's going to be an um, ideal person for us to reach to in McGovern's office. He's in the Northampton regional office. He's the director down right. there. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure you know him. But I think he, given his background and um, the kind of stuff that he did before going to the Obama administration, then working there, and then coming back, because he was John Oliver's. Um, yep, that's how I know him. Yeah, um, regional director too. So I, I feel like um, he would be he would be very supportive to dog a, dog this application for us, and um, he knows Richie all the Neal people. Could earmark it. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why I wanted yeah. to make sure that we had you work with Richie Neal's office because you know a lot of people, and um, we get that we get the right person. To, if you get the right staff person, then we'll be successful. So I'm well, hoping well, that you can pay me to be your lobbyist after I leave if you want. Well, for four and a half million. <laughs> of course, bucks, you are the town's best lobbyist. You really are. You're terrific at getting money. <laughs> well, I mean, for four and a half million dollars in a low interest loan, we got to be able to. Your do it from the sorry no no that's okay were you here for your oh thank you yeah oh yeah yes so you guys as long as we follow up on the 14th i just want to make sure that it yes rock, it's okay? yeah definitely a gold mine yeah yep i mean we have to take advantage of this change and pursue it the change meaning for Richie Neal being head of oh, Ways and Meal yes. means, and then on um, the Ag Committee. Right. McGovern is the sole New England person on the right. Ag Committee, so we can lobby. I mean, he's our representative, so not only can we lobby, lobby him, him, yeah, but he should be able to pull some strings for us. Great, great. He's got a lot of seniority. He took the chair of the rules committee instead of the chair of the ag commi committee. So I'm okay with that, <coughs> but we just need to make sure we go after it. Because a few who's phone calls. Who's the chair of the ag committee? You know? Um, no, I don't, I don't. I have to figure out. Out west who, somewhere? Yeah. It could be the Minnesota lady is really nice, Senator from Minnesota. She's, I've worked with her. Yeah. She's good. I, don't, I just don't know who. Right. Yeah. That what, when do you, are you all finished with your report and everything you have to do? Okay. I think we covered everything. Is there any new business? Um, I just, um, uh, I just wanted to make sure it's not really new, new business, but um, tomorrow night um, is the meeting. Do you know what, what, yeah, where it is and what time? The Gill Town Hall, uh, yeah. I think. It's the Gill Town it's Hall? At seven. I have a... Connor's going to go. Do you oh. need the information? I can get the flyer for you. Oh, yes, because I only have the, um, you know, I only had I thought this. I emailed it to all of you. Um, I, I only had this do. one that has all the meetings for the year out. Yeah, but I thought I... E look in your junk email. That was a rural commonwealth? I it, sent it out to you all. Yeah. Forward it. It's just, or maybe um, I just sent it to You know, I noticed that the, uh, in Boston, that the... Um, the Selectman Association's membership meeting in the morning is, is School Finance 101. I don't know if that has anything to do with... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all relative, but that's good to know. I mean, what we're that's trying to, to do, know. we're trying to get it's, together so we act as a group. Have a rural perspective. But we got to yeah. sort out our own mess yep. so that we can participate 100% and mm. not get penalized. The MMA yeah. would be... All yeah, well, I'm glad towns, that it's not, you know, a housing. A caucus -like event, this, this, the subject's not a housing program that we can't partake in this year. Last year, that was the topic. So oh. It's Governor Baker's housing thing and initiative. Well, and we could. Yeah. Well, I just, I just want to make sure that we go to the June 13th meeting in Heath about zip codes, mm -hmm. because again, if our zip code pro problem isn't sorted out, we need to be acting well, with. All the rest of the, like Shelburne and Buckland and right, stuff. Right, but we don't know whether the zip code problem is helpful or hurtful to us at this point. Oh, no, so. it is hurtful. This, oh, thank you. This is the 
I'm not I'm sure about the March meeting, but the two June the one. Is the one no, I thought we, we have three hundred. Yeah, oh, you're going to talk about it. I don't, it. I don't need to. On our this yeah. is this was a no action. Yeah, we got to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, is she? Oh, she, that's the thing for the ABCC. Sorry. That's the ABCC. Your package is a thing about no action workplace safety in the marijuana industry. Where did that come from? Where did you get that? You Do you all have here. that? Where did I you don't get know. That? It's pretty dense stuff. Where did you get it? it well, that's who I just. Oh, I didn't even see it. We got a no action. Yeah, well, Would, right. Uh, I just informed him. Pat was supposed to call him. I'll read this. Say, so he just said his lawyer will handle this. I said, it okay. was, you're unclear. It, we're supposed to be the change of manager for neighbors, but we just got back today, I think. So, did you stamp it? It was December. That there was no action. No, oh, really. Uh, on the ABC. It was in complete application. So Pat's managing it. That's their stamp. Oh. Gotcha. So that's why it's not on the agenda. Okay, perfect. I'll leave that there. We're going to have the change of manager. We've talked about it before. That you know we wanted to schedule it when Carolyn was here. And anyway, I had a couple just quick uh, things. Go ahead. I no, the only thing that I wanted to talk about real quickly is to uh, since uh, your departure is coming up closely, do you want to post this position sooner rather than later, just to get the ball rolling? Uh, you want to? I have that on the agenda for Friday. If you want to talk more okay. about it, then. All right, it's fine. Um, okay, I don't. You know, I've think made, I made it broad enough to talk about the, the circle of things. Yes, yeah. we could do that. Um, I just had a couple quick things before we adjourn. Sure, uh, oh, was, yeah, and I guess I also did want to talk about the building commissioner. We can also talk about that Friday, but I'll also just say the candidates are still interested, and we can talk more about moving that process forward as well. Okay. Um, All right. Um, I just wanted to thank, uh, you know, I got this in my mail. I think everybody yeah, else yeah. did that. Um, I wanted to thank Deerfield Academy for um, enclosing a check of $60,900 on behalf of Deerfield Academy and support the town of Deerfield. Um, and uh, the Academy recognizes the benefit and importance of a healthy community environment and is happy to help the town face economic challenges. Um, we hope this gift, gift will help the town along with the Academy. Other contributions will demonstrate their appreciation for their relationships we have in the community. So I, I just want to personally thank Keith and, and the board and uh, Deerfield Academy for that. And so you know that I, I thank I sent him a thank you note. Oh, thank you, Kip. So oh, thank you. Great. Yeah, no, it's it's good. I just want to acknowledge that um, it's wonderful that they continue to contribute to us. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to, and that's what people don't understand. Um, could, Connor, is there any way that you could take this information and just forward this to the Finance Committee? Uh, yes. Yep. Tonight, so that they have it for tomorrow. Right. I mean, I, I have been talking about it. We learned our lesson. I know. We don't want to mark it. I, yeah. uh, no, I, um, I know that um, Skip Olmsted had said he was going to go, and there was a couple other people that... Yeah. We're sort of on yeah, the fence. We can forward it to them. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure they had the location and the time because when Skip asked me, I said, I know it's in Gill. I'm assuming it's the town hall, and I'm assuming it's in the evening, but I didn't have the information. So thank you. So um, I could give a quick update on the wastewater systems assessment project. Um, so we have a meeting scheduled for Monday, the 14th. Uh, it's a work public workshop with... Um, Dave Prickett, um, LLC, the, our engineering firm and consultant. And he, um, we've got a couple issues going on. Of course, we have, the, we have our application moving forward for the USDA loan and grant, hopefully. Um, that's pretty, pretty close to complete, and I think this workshop will complete that process and can move that forward. In the meantime, um, the South Deerfield plant has a um, consent Order. Yeah, it's it, there's exactly semantics it's with the words. A consent decree is by no, a judge. It's a, a consent order is from DEP to get it done. So well, I did a little research on that. But anyways, um, we've been asked to fix this in, uh, of course, 90 days, which we don't have enough time. And Dave has um, talked to um, DEP and explained what we're dealing with and what we're doing in the process to address all the needs at that plant and was able he believes able to secure um, more time to complete a temporary solution on that clarifier that needs to be fixed. 
So we hope to learn a lot more about that Monday night, um, but the plan would be to do temporary tanks so we could dismantle the current clarifier, rebuild that, take down the temporary, and move on with phase one of putting in a secondary clarifier and headworks program. Um, and so that discussion will be had Monday. And then we've, I've met with um, Brenda and uh, Tom Scalen, our accountant, and we are reached out to our financial advisor about lining up how we would borrow for this, when we need the money. Um, of course, we all know that funds that we do have, we don't have because they're in an enterprise fund that is non-existent until they're certified. So as soon as that, um, we're, we're just looking at all avenues of how we can fund this Phase 1A emergency um, project for the for the clarifier. How are we going to move that forward in FY20? And if we can, uh, FY19, uh, we're going to have to have a special town meeting to get uh, funding to move forward with that first. You know, the engineering to get that first Phase 1A. So a lot more of this will be discussed on Monday. If anyone. Do you know offhand, is there, was there a second plan besides putting up temporary structures just to construct a new one and take the old one out of service? Yes, and, and the, the, what I have heard, and we could pose this question on Monday, is that the, to, build a second, to build the secondary clarifier would take longer than DEP wants to wait, a couple of years, they said. I, but but we'll, we can ask DEP or ask Dave when he's here. Um, but. That was a thought, was why don't we build the second clarifier? I don't think the first one's going to make it until the second one's built, but I could be wrong about that. But that's just kind of what I've been told. Well, what, what I want to make sure is that we're pursuing the application to the USDA. We are. That's yeah. done. That's done. And, and that we are lobbying for that. Mm -hmm. um, although that. Regardless if we get it or not, we still have to do that second I, clarifier. Oh, I know, but it, it has I a know. huge impact. I what I was going to say, that's the snake in the grass, because w whether you get that or not, something has to be done over there. Yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. but and we want to be able to have, and I feel we have a really good opportunity to get that money and with if this we hustle. Consent. And, that, and I just want to make sure that we're hustling, because that's part of our job. And hopefully is, with the note from DEP money. that it kind of pushes us up on the list of a, you know yeah. application or... I mean, this is part Size of our of story, grant. you know, why it's needful. It is. This is part of how you build the story to get McGovern to make phone calls, to get Richie Neal to do a I hope they can. thing, uh, you know, money, um, set aside money for us. But we're still moving forward on what, yeah, what needs to happen there. So. There's no question about that. Yep. We should be able to max, get the max amount. Um, I hope so. I hope so, too. But it will have a huge impact. It's a big project. So we have to build our story. And I want to make sure that Wendy is helping us because she's really, this is one of her skills is to build the story and to do outreach to these and Your find the right storyteller, huh? Well, a little bit too much. <laughs> but we need to, we need to figure, I, I just want to be sure that you've reached out to the, um, we'll have to get set it up. On, you know, I think yeah. Monday night we'll, we'll get that. real clear on what yeah. what we need to do, and then hopefully with the board, you will reach consensus on how we go forward, and mm -hmm. then we can explain to the legislators what we what we need their help with exactly. Right. I'm not clear on that. So. Well, I, I think we'll there's there is some confusion. Is there it's any public comment this evening? Anybody? You're the only one. You sure you don't want to make up some? Come on, Rocky. No. Did I, did I mention that the Town Buildings Advisory <clears throat> Committee had met? Was that before? I think you so did. Okay, they're going to meet again. Great. <laughs> well, that's good. At least they're coming and I'll back. And I'll, I'll be attending again. I hadn't planned on it, but Coach Connor and uh, Diana and the two of you on the ends are going to be going to the MMA annual meeting. Yes. Like that. We, can, so. we, uh, have we identified the town buildings that we're talking about? There's still only five? They have just met the first time okay. yet, so not certain. And again, the amendment at town meeting floor reduced the amount that we have to spend on that. So I don't know. You know, I'll have to wrestle with that, figure that one out. Okay. There's no further business.
Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make Besides that me? motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you very much, everybody. Thank you.